to elevate. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Two Brothers channel. I'm one brother. Hello, everybody. And I'm the second brother. Welcome to the Two Brothers channel. Another, another interesting episode for you. One of our most powerful ones, I think, is in store today. It's going to be a powerful, powerful one. Back to you, Mr. Phil. Wow. This is a powerful topic. Not is it, not, not is it only a powerful topic. It's a deep topic. It's a long topic. It's an all-encompassing topic. And we may do parts to this. We see how it goes because I don't want us to just treat it on the surface. I want to really not only treat it, I want to drill down. I want to go north, south, east. Well, that's north, south, east, west, whatever. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I want to make sure that everything is covered on this topic. Now, the topic is called paradigm shifts. What did I call it? Paradigm what? shifts the first time i heard that word paradigm shift was in the 90s actually and it was at a business meeting and they were telling us about teaching us about paradigm shifts and two things i've experienced with paradigm shifts one is i've seen it happen mm. and two I have seen that my understanding of, of paradigm shifts has helped me make better decisions for my future. Over to you, Mr. Clay. Let me let you say a few words. Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Phil. Yes, definitely. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very, very powerful one. And it's not probably what most people would think paradigm shift is about because you get the 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 buzzwords about paradigm paradigm shifts around the world and you know but i will i will come at this on a very very personal level because my paradigm has shifted massively over the years and when i talk about massively i'm talking incredibly you know so and and i'm looking at the things that really helped change my paradigm, you know, to, to kickstart it, to shift it in, in certain directions. So um, I'll, I'll let you continue, Mr. Phil, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Claire. We've got so much, so much <laughs> to say on this topic, paradigm sheets, but we just have to start from somewhere. Like they say, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. So I'm just gonna take the first step and we'll see how this goes. Now, paradigm shift. Let me start with the historical part so that I wanna deal with this like someone from, um, from the angle, like I'm talking to someone that has never heard of it because I know a lot of you would have never heard of it. And some of you would have, some of you will have an idea. So I'm, let, me, let me break it down from the beginning. Now, Mankind have gone through many paradigm shifts and they call them ages. So we had the Stone Age. At the Stone Age, the technology was you had the stone. If you wanted to cut something, you fashioned it in this, you fashioned stone, sharp flints, you know, to make fire, to um, cut things, you know, utensils were made, made out of stone. Everything was made out of stone. And then when wars happened then, if you wanted to defend your territory, you used stones, you know, sling, stones, everything. Then someone discovered how to beat bronze and start, they started adding bronze to stone, bronze, you know. And then they started using, when they went to war, they started using bronze to fight people that were using stones. Hmm. And you know, bronze mm -hmm. obviously overcame those people that were using stone. So the paradigm shifted from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age. And everybody was happy with bronze. Oh, now we've got bronze. Look, bronze is malleable. We can do this thing. We can do that with bronze and everything, I think. And then one day, someone found iron and they called it the blue bronze. They, bought, they called it 
the blue glass or something like that, blue bronze or whatever, I think, they were, but it was iron. And they found that iron was actually stronger than bronze. So when they went to war and the guy was swinging his bronze sword, the iron would cut the bronze. Hmm. And then the Iron Age came into force because the armies that had iron won the wars. So we had the Iron Age, okay? And now the interesting thing is this, this age lasted for thousands of years. Thousands, then hundreds of thousands, then things like that. Now, from the Iron Age, things started happening. Then the agricultural age came to play. <laughs> Why agricultural age? The people that had the iron had the power. However, the people that had the iron and was now able to stay in a place, do animal husbandry and plant the field, now had the food to feed their army. Before then, everyone was normal, picking up the land, picking up the land anywhere you go, you move from this, if the food finishes from this land, you move to the next land. If food finishes here, you move to the next land. But because of the advent of agricultural age and the people learn now to do animal husbandry, they now were able to stay on one land and supply their army. So the people that could not supply their army, their army obviously were stronger and last, last yes, you had iron, I had iron. We're fighting each other, but guess what? Your army is getting hungrier where my, my army is getting supplies. Who's gonna mm. win? Who's gonna win? So agricultural age now came into force. The paradigm now shifted from the iron age to the agricultural age. Now, the agricultural age lasted for a long time. Everybody were now farming. Nobody was, people were not as normal as we were before. And that happened for a long time. And that's when the time when people were, the, the emergence of professions started coming about. Because when you have people in a gathering, when you have people in a place, then, oh, you know how to smith iron. Oh, I need your services oh you know how to fashion wood oh you're a carpenter i need your services oh you know how to sew clothes oh we need your services oh you're a shopkeeper you know so things were getting settled naturally okay and in the agricultural age and that's where even to today you have families with the name farmer that means that from time in memorial when people started settling they were the farmers you have the smith they could be goldsmith, they could be ironsmith. You, you got what I'm saying? Um, you know, you have, you, you have uh, what other family name can, the tailors, you, the you had, um, sorry? The butchers. You had the butchers, you know, thank you, names. So everybody had a family profession. What did I say? A family profession, not, an, not a singular person profession, a family profession. So you, your, everyone in your family, if you are butchers, you learn how to butcher. Anyone, everyone in your family, if you're uh, iron smiths, you learn how to iron smith. Do you got what I'm saying? And you are known by that, okay? Mm. Now, and that went on for so long. At that time, a lot of people did not really care about universities. Only the elite of the elite will send their children to universities because it was specialized information. What do I need? I'm butchering meat here. I don't need to know about physics. It doesn't feed me. So very few people in the courts and people like Galileo were the ones that were in looking at things like science and things like that. But that was about to change. Why? Because the industrial revolution we're now coming closer to our age now. I've gone through so many years. Please do some more research on the internet. And um, that's why this uh, topic is very interesting because it is deeper than I'm even saying it. But I'm going very quickly now. So now the advent of the industrial age was now coming. 
And why industrial age? Before the industrial age, it was about if you wanted to make something, you make something and you make it unique for one person. You make, they would place an order. I want a painting done for myself, okay? You go and supply that order. I want clothes made for myself, that order. I want swords made for myself. I want armor made for myself. I want, I want shields made for myself. So it was specifically specific for that order. And we lived like that for hundreds of years. And trade by barter was the way things were then that, you know, if you, if you trade by, 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 by barter, put, um, put it this way, was heavily relied upon as commerce in those days. But when the industrial age came, it now started looking at the idea of mass production. So if I'm going to make a pen in the past, I will make a pen for that person and it, it will be specifically for them, pen and quill for them, arrows for them. Whatever. But now how about us making it mass? So with the industrial revolution around the 1800s into the 1900s, uh, people like Henry Ford, people like Andrew Carnegie, um, people, the industrialists started talking about mass production. And then, cut long story short, was, what happened was that they, the advent of factories, factories where everything can be produced, mass, ma everything can be mass produced from food, canning food to making cars. Okay, um, creating building materials for buildings and everything like that. Now, for that reason, and this is why a lot of people don't understand, because when things happen and you don't know the why behind them, you don't, you are bound to not know the reason why. Okay, and what I, where am I going to? I'm going to that is why universities became needed. Because if you have factories, you have to have administrators to run the factories. You have to have um, physicians if anything goes wrong in the factory, anyone gets hurt. You, ha you have to have um, insurance because you know that, that brings bankers. You have to have loans because you need capital to run things. So universities now became something that people started enrolling in. As a matter of fact, when this time came about, when they told the farmer, send your child to the university, the farmer said, for what? I've got acres of farm to land. I've got acres of land to farm. Why would I send my child to the university to do what? You know what I'm saying? And cut long story short, some people do did though. Some people did. And because the demand was higher than the some supply then, we're talking about the early, 20s, 30s, 1940s, 1950s. The people that went to university came back with a huge pay packet. Now, the farmer's children that were on the farm, yeah, they were doing okay, but not as, not as compared to this new breed. They were coming from university, coming with this strange thing called a degree. And this degree, they had a job, they had an office, they don't have to be digging their hands into dirt all day. They had this car loan, they, ah! Suddenly, everybody now looked at this thing called getting a degree as, whoa, that is the way to go. Now, all that was, was just another paradigm shift. But everybody then said, okay, you know how to do it nowadays? send your children to school, get them to university, make sure they get that thing called a degree because that is the far more lucrative way to do things. Nobody asked why. Anyway, by the time I came on the scene, <laughs> like Mr. Claire said, it's not getting get past level. By the time I came on the scene, it was the 1970s. Universities and the industrial revolution was in full big swing. As a matter of fact, everyone could swear by it. And 
So I was born into a world where all this has happened and, you know, nobody's now no longer farming the, 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 farming the land like that anymore. No one was having family professions anymore. Now professions went from being family professions to individual professions. So now I'm the professional now, not my family that's passing it on to me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So everybody was now individual. And now we're now feeding this industrial machine, being it all be it from Africa, because my parents were part of those that went to the university, got the degree, and became part of these professionals. Absolutely wonderful, nothing wrong with that. However, and I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Claire in a minute. By the 19, middle of 1980s, I started seeing a change. Suddenly, people were coming out of universities for the first time in history. There was no job for them. And I'm like, even as a young man, I was looking at things like, this is weird. Oh, but everybody would just wait. Business as usual. And the percentage started growing. So the percentage last year that came out of university and did not get a job was not good. But hey, we carried on. Now this year is worse. Now this year is worse. The next year is worse. The next year is worse. And that has continued from 19, I believe 1985 into 90s. It just got worse and got worse. Now, here I was seeing this paradigm shift. And here I was at a point about to go to university. I even went to university and spent two weeks and I looked at everything. That time I was already fortunate to have the books that we tell you to be reading. My dad said, you need to go to university. And I said, looking at this trend, nah, I'm not gonna go to university. I'm going to self-educate myself. <gasps> How dare you? Remember when I said that my dad chased me out of the house? That was the fight we had. He wanted me to go to university and I said no. Because I'm looking at the casualty of everybody coming out of university and I calculated that the way the paradigm shifts was moving but if I keep going in this direction, I will be at the position that people my age are today. And what is that position? A position of relying totally on a job that it can sack you at any time. <clears throat> and you don't have any real. So I decided, you know what? Rather than me go in that direction that I know that that's the end, I'm going to self-educate myself so that I'll be able to maneuver whatever happens in the future. I'm talking to you in that future that I was talking about. And ladies and gentlemen, did I make the right choice? Oh boy, did I make the right choice? Because nowadays I'd hate not to have the track record that I now have. I would hate to just be starting this journey right now. I would hate to basically be completely reliant on a job for my future right now. Thankfully, I'm no longer in that situation. And thankfully, I choose that decision many years ago to self-educate myself. Now, when I did that, and if what I'm going to say before I hand over to Mr. Claire now is that all that that I've said is just a paradigm shift. The paradigm has now shifted again from universities to you self-educating yourself in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd rely on the universities being what they were before, you have, you've missed the boat, okay? Remember, I saw this trend 30 years ago and I staked my life on it. Mr. Claire, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Mr. Phil, thank you for the long history history lesson. Um, 
it it, it brought up, it brought up so many memories. And um, what, what what are my thoughts? My thoughts are that um, when you were describing the way technologies was changing the paradigm of the world, and um, and how people were taking over the family businesses, you know, that was a line of work. Uh, the, the, the children are, you know, people lived on farms, so the children are brought up to work on the farm. And then people started going into offices and started, you know, you know, getting degrees. Um, and, you know, because of the paradigm shifting. Now there's a lot of things that happen around, you know, because depending on where you are in the world, you know, if you were in Africa, like the likes of Congo, you were having your hands chopped off while people were going to universities in the West. <laughs> so depending on where you find yourself, you know, if you believe in reincarnation, you know, I don't know where you were last time you came around, but <laughs> this is where you are right now. Um, so, but I, I remember those times where you had those situations because I'm right behind you. I mean, you're four years older than me. So I, I could see you say you didn't want to go to university. And, and you had good reasons. I mean, it was plain, it was obvious. It was plainly obvious. Maybe it wasn't announced. <laughs> Maybe somebody didn't grab the mic and say, hello, good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the paradigm has shifted. <laughs> <laughs> but by that time, from my point of view, it was plain. The paradigm has shifted because everybody that was going to university to do a particular degree was not walking into the job that they studied. Some were going into Sainsbury's, the supermarket, some was going into security. So we're going to do, I was like, okay, so when are you going to do the job that you studied? Or eventually I'll get there. Okay. Okay. You know, don't let me say anything. <laughs> you know? And, and they were kind of like grinding their way around. And I remember talking to my mentor and I said, I, I, you know, I have to go to university because that's what we have to do with Africans. We have to go to university. And they said, what for? What do you want to go to university for? I said, I don't know, but that's what we have to do. We have to go to university. He said, but you need that in your business. My business mentor still asked me that. Do you need that in your business? And I was like, first of all, he said, what do you want to study? I said, I wanted to do science because I enjoy science. So if I'm going to go to university, that's what I would do is university science. Because, you know, otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass it. So I said, you know, science. And he said, do you need that in your business? And I was stumped. You know, I, did, I didn't like speaking to my mentor at that time because, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not it makes to, too much sense. <laughs> it's not one to debate with you, you know, or, or, or kind of sugarcoat it with you. It was either bam or get out. <laughs> so it was just like, do you need that? You, you, I said, no. I said, so why are you going? I said, because I have to. I said, well, you know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, it's easy for you, bro. It's easy for you to say that you go tell my dad that, you know. The last night I said he didn't want to go, got kicked out of the house. But anyway, we won't go there. So um, those are the kind of, and I was, I think I was around, at that time, I was around 17, 18. So it makes, now that I'm a parent myself, it makes you think about what your kids are going through at that age. You know, are you forcing them in a certain direction? Or even if you are that age, are you being forced in a certain direction that you know is a train crash? You know, that's not what I want to do. That's not what my passion is. But everybody is pushing you in that direction. And the push is strong and the push is steady. And you can see that it's going to be a disaster. So let me use this time, this opportunity to encourage you to say, yes, yeah, the two brothers are on your side. Don't do it. Don't do it. If they have a problem, they should come and speak to me. 
even forget Mr. Phil. Let them come and speak to me. <laughs> you, have that, you have that trump card because the two brothers say so. Go and speak to them. Okay? Back to you, Mr. Phil. Thank you, Mr. Kenley. Look, we're not going to make this the, the, uh, the debate about going to university or not because one of the things that is very clear is that not everybody can do what Mr. Phil did. Some of you will be shocked that Mr. Phil didn't bother going to get a degree. However, Mr. Phil is not uneducated. <laughs> Why do you need some certificate to tell you that you're intelligent? Let's, first of all, ask yourself that. The kind of inferiority complex that until someone miseducates you and gives you a sheet of paper to show that you are miseducated is the sign that you're educated. What kind of um, inferiority complex is that? Anyway, just, okay, don't let me even call it inferiority complex, but just look at it and say, why do you need someone to give you a sheet of paper to tell you that you're educated? You are either educated or you're not. And how does it show? It shows through your expressions. Remember the one that we did, the, um, the, the video that we did about why our education doesn't work for us. The most important thing is not the certificate. The most important thing is what, how you express yourself with that knowledge. If your knowledge is not doing anything practical to solve any solution, then I beg to ask, how do you say you're not educated? Mr. Claire, what, am, I, am, I, am I making any sense? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because um, most people rely on that piece of paper to, to, well, that piece of paper, I've noticed that people that, what they were before and after the piece of paper, there was no real change in them. And that really used to worry me. Because I'm expecting, you know, I'm expecting some levels here. <laughs> And that is why it is important that we're talking about this topic because let's go take it back to the beginning. We're talking about paradigm shifts. Why were the universities created to have mass influx of people? Before it was an exclusive thing where a few people go to. Again, the paradigm that shifted that made university as what you mean to see today where everybody send it like a, like, like, like a conveyor belt. This year's people go through the same process. What started that was the advent of industrial revolution. And why industrial revolution? Because the factories needed all these professions to support it. But get to, guess what? The industrial revolution and the industrial complex has been uh, is as well as gone now because after the industrial age, we've We've gone into the computer age. We're now in the information age. So that was two ages ago. And what happened was that it started with a slowdown because right now, factories are controlled by AI now, not by human beings. As a matter of fact, guess what they said? The paradigm has shifted so much into AI when it comes to factories that they said that the factories and the production of the future Guess how many people that they need to employ, Mr. Claire? How many, sir? Two people. Not even two people. One person. A man and a dog. <laughs> the man to feed the dog and the dog to make sure that the man doesn't touch the machines. <laughs> <laughs> that is the factory of the future. Mm. The factory of the future, let me repeat again. They need two personnel, a man and a dog. The man is there to feed the dog, make sure the dog is okay. And the dog is there to make sure that the man doesn't go near anything. Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, because Mr. Kinnair saw me go through a hard path. And the hard path I, I went through was a corridor where I saw a paradigm has shifted 
And here I was, all the forces was pushing me in the other direction. And I could see the end product, but no one around me could see it. Mm. It was more like they were so indoctrinated, fanatically indoctrinated, relying on who? The West. To do what? Take care of them. Leia, how good a job is the, is the West doing to take care of our infrastructure, to take care of our welfare, to take care of our political system? How good a job is the well doing, Mr. Clay, with the, the West doing? How good a job are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> Compared to what? Compared to our expectations. <laughs> Compared, to, <laughs> Compared to our level of reliance over reliance on their education, on their outlook, on their taking care of us. Like I'm like my mentor always says, Jim Ron always says that you know don't don't expect anything from them. <laughs> Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, some of you, some of you might be sweating right now. Some of you might be very uncomfortable hearing what we are saying because this is the first time you've actually ever thought of it that your education, your total education might actually be a miseducation, mm -hmm. not serving you in any way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you've not looked at why that education was put in the place, in the first place. And that saying still rings true. When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Yeah. When the purpose of a thing is not known, even my dad, my dad fought me because obviously he wanted his son to be successful. He fought me over this, chased me out of the house. But even he missed the point that why is this university in the place as well? And I've told the story of my dad where, where he ended up. And I tell the story to remind me and to serve as a cautionary story and to make sure what my, 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 what my dad went through is not a waste. Because the more I tell the story, the more what it, that it's worth what he went through. Because at the end, with the degree and the prestigious from a prestigious university in the UK and everything, he still ended up back in the UK and they were calling him a boy and they were giving him a mop to mop a school where I was in a son in the looking at watching this happen, saying, What fracking went wrong? This man is an amazing man. This man is as intelligent as they come. What went wrong? That same man, before he died, two weeks before he died, called me and he said, You know, son, I think you're on the right path. Oh, man, by that time, you know, we had fought so much, I didn't even care where it was. Where I, said, I'm a <laughs> I don't care, my fucking. You're telling me now that I'm a right back when you nearly killed me. I couldn't care less. He said, mm -hmm. he said to me, no, 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 son, I think you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, he died. Mm -hmm. He said a bit more, that's a bit more confidential, but everything he said was to tell me that, son, I was wrong and you were right, son. There's something you're saying, son, that I'm not, that I didn't see, but I've had an experience now that has shown me the future and I can see that you are right. And I was like, I was still very salty. I was not, I was, <laughs> after the <nearly killing. laughs> Mr. Claire, please say some words. <laughs> no, there, was no, there was no hugs and kisses, eh? No, no, no. Don't yeah. come and tell me now. Don't come and tell me now. After you, in short, I went through hell. Go on, Mr. Clay. Oh, no, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's the whole point of it. I'm, I'm, how, how sure are you? Are you really sure? You know, because a lot of these, a lot of parents, you know, they give their children over to the education system to bring them up for them. Yeah. To take the, to take the responsibility away the, the guidance responsibility away from them. They literally just turn them over. And that is what I'm saying. That is scary when you actually understand that. 
well, to hand over your children's education. You don't know what they've been taught, but that will be the fabric of their future, their outlook, their makeup, everything that is important in their life. You're putting it in the hands of people that don't, that, whose responsibility is not to care about you. Exactly. And the good thing, the good thing I have, don't be, don't be fearful if you have children already in there and stepped in, and even in university level. The good thing about it is, you know, I know confidently that they will come out confused. <laughs> uh, yeah. And because they will come out confused, they'll be looking for answers. Like, okay, we've been through it, we've done it, I got the A's, I got the stars. Why is it not working like they told me it would work? Then you say, okay, come here, come here. Let me tell you the real stuff. With my <laughs> children, with my children, um they know i've told them from day one they know i've said go to school learn what they tell you to learn but no that's not the full story hmm. come to me and i'll tell you the full story and that has worked perfectly mr like you mr clay they just go in there they nod yeah 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 okay we're gonna go and find out <laughs> <laughs> and they do, you know. And what then happens is that, like you said, Mr. Claire, when they come out confused, they at least know that there is an answer. And that is what we are providing through these videos of ours with you. There's an answer. Now, the future is not in universities. <gasps> Mr. Phil, what are you saying? Yes. The future is not in universities. First and foremost, the moment you know why they're in the, in the situation, um, why they were created, then the next thing you know is the, what they were created for. That yes. is no longer valid. What they were created for is no longer valid. So what is going on today? Today, you see, human beings, What one thing about us is that once we have a system that is working, we are very slow to change direction. So because it has worked well for over 150 years, my goodness, it's like we don't want to, so we're like frog in, in, in water. That the, the situation is slowly, and because it's slowly changing, we don't notice it. Mm. But I am telling you today, universities are gonna be a thing of the past in the next 10 to 15 years. Mm. information and education is going back to where it came from where was it before it was in families mm. it was in exclusive situations now technology has now actually made it decentralized so through your google although Another thing is that the danger with Google is that Google now has so much power that it can actually misinform you. Hmm. What did I say there? Google has so much power that it can actually misinform you. As in Google is no longer, unfortunately, a, an unbiased provider of information. Google and the likes of Google, the likes of Facebook, they're now biased information providers. They will show you what they want to show you, unfortunately. But it is what it is. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Like I keep saying, it is what it is. You just navigate as best as you can. Okay. So, but information now is the real education. How do you navigate now? Like Mr. Claire was saying earlier on, in Belgium, they used to cut their hands. How did we find that out? We didn't find that out through our education. We found that through social media. So social media now is far more an effective educator now than universities. Mr. Clare. Hmm. Yes, sir. Um, what you find is even in the education system, the paradigm has shifted. Because with the, with the technology, you don't have to leave your home. You can all be homeschooled. You can get... Let me tell you the school of the future. You're going to get the best teacher on a particular day, on a particular subject that will teach you 
and you just download this program, you will learn what you need to learn, switch off and off with your day. You will not be packing yourself into classrooms. You will not be packing yourself into halls. You will not be packing yourself into none of that. You'll be, you'll be schooling from home. Just like we're working from home. This is this this has never been done before, guys. You know, so just imagine now the reason why they be slow, like Mr. Phil said, they're, they're very slow in getting that to be like done. And it's big hope for Africa as well. I'm praying. Thank you. For Africa. Thank you. And the reason why they're slow and slow and slow because they're gonna put a lot of people out of jobs. You Thank know, you. more schools. Anyway, back to you, Mr. Phil. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. You see, you said something there. You said something that it's a big hope for Africa. Because what Africa has missed out on is the Industrial Revolution. Africa is not industrialized at all. And that is why everything that you used in Africa is imported and manufactured somewhere else. That is, OK, let me quickly say, I was going to say that's another story. But quickly, what happened there was this, simply this. They saw that all the minerals were coming from Africa, all the raw materials that was anything worth anything from cocoa to coffee to tea, everything was coming from Africa to your minerals and everything. They said, okay, you know what? We better not let them have industry there because if they have the raw materials there and they have the industry, what do we have? Nothing. So, no, 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 no. We have to do whatever we have to make to make sure that we have the industry. Yes, they have the raw materials. Yes, they will get money. But guess what? They will have to spend the money on what we created. Mm. Now, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it is what it is. And I'm just saying that you find yourself there and you move better. Okay? Mm. Use the information to move better. All right? And uh, so, so, so there's so many things where the pad, but uh, the point is that the paradigm has now even shifted to the point that this pendulum has swung to where Africa can take advantage of where things are now. Because in the world, for you to actually excel now, you don't need industry as much anymore. Exactly. exactly. Give a quick example. Nigeria, when telephones came into Nigeria, I remember only a few people had telephones. Now, practically everyone in Nigeria has telephones. Why? Technology. Technology has made it that you don't need hard infrastructure as you used to before. Now, it's more digital. It's more Wi-Fi. It's more... Do you get what I'm saying? So... You can skip that fact that you lack industrial. Yes, you still need industry. You still need some industry. But it is not as debilitating as before. If, and this is the if, this is the if, if you take advantage of the fact that it is now information technology. Let me give you another example. I studied graphic arts. One of the things we used to do then to, to do a font, we would paint it, literally paint it. The B, the if you want to say bath, B A, you paint it. Now the app, you just type bath, choose what font you want it to look like. That used to take like oh, man. Okay, let me show you another technology. Leia, you will remember this. The time when we used to we go to the photographer. There used to be something called a photographer. Imagine in Nigeria. I remember when we used to go to the photographer. We would get there. They would say, sit down, say cheese. They would take your picture. Then it would take four or six weeks later for you to go and collect your picture. Mm. Now you take your picture instantly. Broadcast it instantly. Mr. Kinley, say a few words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You are ready. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 uh, you know it's, it, this is the thing. You don't have to be at the mercy because this Western world that they build this infrastructure, that infrastructure, infrastructure. Number one, infrastructure costs a lot of money to create and it costs just as much to maintain. 
as well as you know the human resources that goes into the infrastructure maintenance. Now, if you don't need all that, or you need a one one tenth of it to have this even more advanced technology at play, like we, we with the mobile phones, with the you know with the television, because most of us nobody nobody's actually watching television anymore. Everybody's on their mobile phone. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a big story in itself. Thank you. That's a paradigm shift. Over to you again, Mr. Kone. Sorry. So the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is this. You can actually catch up and overtake the West where you are now by you just thinking right. So you're not thinking, oh, we have to build infrastructure. Hello. You're not thinking, oh, we have to build schools. Hello. You're actually going and joining them where they're at. So you're thinking, oh, how can we go? How can we build technology? How can we sort ourselves out so that we don't need to be going to schools anymore? We can, we can, we can be studying from home. We can get the best teachers in the country. Record that teacher. Let him teach a subject. Play to the everybody. Log in. Watch your watch. Watch the school. Do your exam. You, is it is it is it not? Is this listen? Schooling and education is not about catching you out. <laughs> Which is what you know they've turned it into in Africa. It's not about catching you out. It's not about catching you. Out. It's about you learning. You know, learning is fun. And when you learn what you need to learn, you you then can apply it, right? It's not about oh. You know, it, so 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 it's just you can overtake them. You can overtake the West. You can enjoy what they're enjoying right now. You know, so I hope I'm making sense because you know it's 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 some it's something that it baffles me why you know, and this is why even in political sense you have to change your politics. You have to change the way you interact with each other. You have to change your politics. You have to change your religion. You have to change your a lot of things in the way you interact because paradigms are shifting all the time. Even churches. Look at what COVID did. COVID churches were locked, right? <laughs> and one thing I keep saying when it comes to COVID, this might be very controversial. This is probably for the other channel, but you know, nobody was calling on the Pope to cure COVID. <laughs> Yeah, that's a part of that channel. <laughs> I hear you, sir. You know what? Let's quickly recap, then we'll end now. Um, just a quick recap. Remember, it started with we started humankind started with the Stone Age, then the Bronze Age, then the Iron Age, then the Agricultural Age came, then the Industrial Age came. Now, from the Stone Age to the Agricultural Age took thousands of years. <clears throat> Agricultural age into the industrial age probably took 500 years to the end of it. Computer age took maybe just 50 years, maybe 25 years, maybe 25 to 50 years. Information age that we are. So what we are noticing is that it is taking less time for paradigms to shift. Mr. Kline was saying it earlier on that we're not even at the time that the paradigm is shifting so quickly that that people going to universities now come out with their degrees completely outdated with the world that they're coming to. That's because the pattern is moving so quickly. We're now living in a world that a woman with no degree that just looks well, that does look nice, makes more money than a doctor because she's on OnlyFans or IG model or things like that. Influencers are making millions. Yeah. Why? Because of the paradigm shift. The paradigm has shifted from the old way of doing things. What the assignment I want, we're going to do a part two to this. We may even do a part three, but the assignment I want everyone is to do start, start now taking note. Be noticing things. Be asking questions. Because that's where it starts. What we're giving you now is the reason why things are the way they are. Why? 
because the paradigms are shifting and they're shifting very quickly. I've got children. I don't tell them to go to university. I tell them, look, go and get a skill. Nowadays, it's far better than, far better you get a skill than getting a degree. <gasps> Mr. Phil. <laughs> I grew up in a time, unfortunately, in Nigeria, where if a child says he wants to go and become a mechanic, the whole family will start crying. Ah! Oh, my Lord. Meanwhile, they actually have a skill. It's unbelievable how miseducated we, and because of our attitude, we don't actually even have any technical skill left in Africa. Mm. Meanwhile, that is what we want. That's what mm. we need for our industry. Mm. But we discouraged it so bad. So, the good news, the good news is this. Technology can actually build a bridge for you to hop, skip, and jump what you have missed as Africans. Mm -hmm. Now your mobile phone is so powerful. Your mobile phone is now a complete, my goodness. Your mobile phone is now a TV station. Your mobile phone is now a complete graphic, graphic institution. Your mobile phone is now um, entertainment. Your mobile phone is now um, what's it? information, education. Your mobile phone is everything now. It's all at the finger. It's all at your palm now. That is all down to the paradigm that we are living in now. It's all in our palms. Look, we now have <laughs> Mr. Kinley, over to you. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. I'm enjoying that. I was enjoying that, you know, because that's it. So well, one thing I will, leave, I will end on, because we're running out of time. One thing yeah. I will end on is um, cultivate your ability to learn and adapt. That is the, that's the skill you need to have. Don't be too rigid. Know that, okay, whatever it is, I can learn it. I remember when I first got my first job, Mr. Phil was telling me, listen, don't worry. Because I was like, I haven't been to university. I don't have a degree. <laughs> so I'd be like, don't worry. When you get it, they will teach you what to do. They will teach me what to do. They will teach you what to do. <laughs> you know? And with that comp quiet confidence, we kind of like walked in there and they told us what to do. So just rely on your ability to learn and to adapt. Learn and adapt. Back to you, Mr. Phil. Mr. Clare is now, in the next part, we're going to look into Mr. Clare's journey a bit more because Mr. Clare is now an executive, a proper executive. And he ended, Mr. Clare actually ended up getting his degree and we will tell you why in the next part. And, um, you know, and so, but he went so high and no, don't let me let the cat out of the bag. You know, so Mr. Clay actually has a degree. I'm still the stubborn. <laughs> anyway, we see you in part two because the story continues. On that note, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>